Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. My reflection today I've entitled St. Nectarios on the Big Screen. I've been uh, away. Thanks a lot for your patience uh, for this next vlog. I was away this last week at uh, the St. Cosmos Education Conference in Gold Canyon, Arizona. A wonderful, wonderful conference of uh, Orthodox Christian home educators, principals, headmasters, teachers, students. It just uh, was fantastic. Uh, this is probably the, the fifth year that I've gone and spoken there. Really thankful for what I see developing, the beautiful things developing with regards to leadership uh, in higher education and Orthodox education in particular. Super wonderful. I also would like to uh, announce to you the news about our upcoming annual uh, PNP conference, which will be June 3rd to 5th here in Riverside, hosted here at St. Andrew Church. Uh, we've booked the local Marriott Hotel right around the corner from the church here for all of you who want to come in from out of town. The theme this year will be Holy Orthodoxy, subtitled Presenting the Christian Faith. And I am enthused by the lineup of speakers that we have. The, the conference will be keynoted uh, and anchored by Father Maximus Constus, uh, the very accomplished patrologist and uh, archimandrite of the church uh, from Boston. Father will give uh, four lectures. We have a couple of wonderful young uh, scholars. Dr. Tikhon Pino will come. Uh, Father Bogdan Bucher from St. Vladimir Seminary will come. And I'll chip in uh, my best effort to give a lecture on conversion paradigms. The goal of the conference uh, on Holy Orthodoxy will be to present uh, an overview, a basic catechetical uh, uh, review of the church for those who want to be able to have a broad uh, exposure to Holy Orthodoxy. And we hope that it will nourish uh, the faithful and serve as a platform of connection uh, for many who are inquiring into the traditional Christian faith. So keep that in mind. You can go to our website uh, to learn more uh, and to register. Well, we hope to have uh, a good group here, maybe 500 on site, God willing, and, uh, and the rest who aren't able to travel here can uh, participate via a live stream link uh, through Crowdcast. So that's what we're, we're hoping to do. Please consider coming and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in June. So my reflection today is on the incredible saint, uh, the great gift of God to the 20th century, Saint Nectarios of Aegina, the Metropolitan of Pentopolis. He uh, has, of course, taken the Orthodox world by his extreme love and has become uh, one of the most dear saints to Orthodox of every background uh, throughout the world. This uh, beautiful saint, if you want to know more about his life, you can go to the PNP app and push on the Synaxarian and go to November 9th, his feast day. And there you can hear uh, a marvelous life read to you uh, of St. Nectarios. Or if you want to read something larger, you can read the marvelous kind of historical biography of St. Nectarios written by Sotos Hondropoulos. It's a fantastic uh, text to read. Um, also, uh, Constantine Kavarnos. Uh, wrote uh, a beautiful small work on St. Nectarios of Aegina. Those are some fundamental sources in the English language that you can read. St. Nectarios won my heart uh, many years ago, 30 years ago this year, in fact, uh, as I was studying Holy Orthodoxy and um, approaching the church, someone gave me uh, his biography, and I sat down and read the amazing life of this 20th century saint, and I was completely undone. I was completely undone. I was left a, a puddle, I should say, on the ground. I had never seen uh, the Christian faith lived in this way. I had, for 25 years at the time, been uh, a Presbyterian, a Protestant Christian. I knew many people who loved God, who prayed faithfully every day, who read the scriptures every day, who were faithful to church and to worship and, and served, but I had no idea the potentiality of a human being and what God, by his grace in the church, uh, through the example of the saints and the sacred mysteries of the church, was capable of producing 
in a human being until I read the life of St. Nectarios of Aegina. I remember finishing it. I, I wept through the, through the volume, and I'm not uh, a weeper. I wish I was more of a weeper. Uh, but I wept through the volume and, and just had Kleenex constantly in my hand. And when I gave the volume to my wife, I said, sweetheart, you, you've got to read this. I said, this is a Christian, and I'm not one. It was an extremely important moment for me as I made a tangible connection to uh, this saint and to what was possible by the love of God. My wife read the account and had the same experience. And we made an agreement uh, that as soon as we could, we would try to uh, take a, a, a sacred pilgrimage to Greece and to walk in his footsteps uh, in the areas where he served in Athens and then on the island of Aegina, outside of Piraeus there. You have to take a little boat. Uh, as well as going to the hospital where he died. And we were in 1997, uh, privileged to take that trip. We made that trip with uh, our youngest daughter at the time, uh, our daughter Anastasia. And we put her, she was only a few months old, she was on our back, and we left our three oldest children at home with some friends. And we went on this wonderful pilgrimage. And we were able to visit the island, uh, to venerate his sacred relics, to meet the nuns of his community there on Aegina, uh, as well as a walk uh, in his footsteps in Athens. In fact, we wanted to go to uh, the hospital where St. Nectarios died. He died of uh, cancer um, in 1920. And uh, we went to this uh, one hospital. We thought it was the hospital that he, where he had died. And we were searching. And, and some nice physician who had served in America uh, but was but had returned to Greece saw us walking around, this priest and uh, Presitera with the baby on their back. And he said, can I help you? You look lost. <laughs> we said, indeed we are. Indeed we are. And uh, he, we, we said, we want to find the room where St. Nectarios reposed uh, because we've heard that it was changed into a chapel and we would like to, to venerate his icon and, and just to be in that holy place. Some of you may know that when St. Nectarios died, he was sharing a hospital room with a man who had been a par paralytic. Uh, he had been completely paralyzed in his bed for some years. And unable to move. And when St. Nectarios uh, passed away and went to paradise, uh, the, the nun who was attending him took off his sweater and placed it on top of the man's legs, on top of his, his covers, and the man was healed uh, and from his paralysis uh, at the time of St. Nectarios' repose. So we wanted to see this. And the, the, the young doctor told us, oh, you know what? Um, wrong hospital. <laughs> wrong hospital. So he showed us, you know, go out the door, go up the street about another mile, mile and a half. We walk, we were able to find the hospital and find the room, which was covered with uh, candili everywhere and icons of St. Nectarios, and otherwise untouched. The two beds were there. It was uh, just a very special place uh, to visit. I'm mentioning all of this because uh, last evening, uh, we here in our parish uh, packed out a local AMC movie theater and went to see the newly released magnificent film, Man of God, The Life of St. Nectarios. This film um, was produced, written, and directed by uh, an Orthodox uh, producer named Yelena Popovich. Uh, it had some incredible actors, the man who played uh, St. Nectarios, uh, Eris, Servatalis was just incredible. Uh, Mickey Rourke, in fact, played the um, the paralyzed man, uh, and and really made that final scene just come to life. Uh, Costa, the servant of Saint Nectaros, who helped him publish so much of his material over the course of his life, it was just a magnificent film. You could have heard a pin drop throughout the whole course of the movie, and when it was over sobbing, just grown persons just sobbing in joy and wonderment. Uh, it was uh, truly an incredible accomplishment. I received uh, mm -hmm. notes from quite a few of my priest friends today from all over the place who, who also went to, to see the film since it was released across the United States in limited release um, yesterday. And it's going to show, I think, once more uh, at least here in California, uh, next Monday, this coming Monday on the 28th. I highly encourage you to, to go and see 
this magnificent film and to let your heart be blessed and expanded uh, as you see the contours of a life completely devoted to Christ. St. Nectarios is, has been a shining light for the last 102 years since his glorification uh, to the world and for many years before that uh, to those who knew him in Egypt and in Greece. Especially at this time of public acrimony and judgment at such high levels, to see a man who practiced the love of enemies, to see a man who refused to hold a grudge, to see a man who could articulate so clearly uh, the Christian perspective on authority and power uh, and the glory of what it means to be a servant. Um, under those umbrellas, if you read the life of St. Nectarios and you, or you go to see the, the movie, you will have presented before you the radical reality of holiness and the love of Christ and what's possible uh, in our time. Hope will simply invade your life to watch this film. So I, I wish you all uh, uh, good strength for the fast and especially that uh, you might be able to know St. Nectarios, the wonder worker, and be greatly encouraged to serve Christ in imitation also of this incredible saint. God bless you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a seven lecture series by Reverend Dr. Kalinik Berger entitled The Divine Identity of Christ. The highly esteemed Hieromonk scholar, Father Kalinik sets forth the majestic and high Christology of the early church in these lectures, Father Kalinik refutes the secular criticisms of Orthodox Christology and reveals that Jesus himself taught his divine identity to his disciples, that the early church both honored and preached this high Christology, and that this Christology is codified in the pages of the New Testament and the Nicene Creed. Along the way, he also reveals the vacuous secular quest for the historical Jesus unpacks the historical theological witness about Jesus in the pre-Nicene Church through Nicaea, Ephesus, and to the Fourth Ecumenical Council at Chalcedon. Here is a feast of faith for Christians, sure to illumine our hearts and minds concerning the deity of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For these and other titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.